everyone welcome to the trident tabletop painting session uh today we're going to be working on the africa corpse german army uh just showing you guys how i actually paint my miniatures so with that said let's get at her here's a quick reference of paints and products that i use for this project uh, if you weren't too sure what to use this should help a little bit uh, so let's get at her okay so after you get your uh, miniatures primed. I actually use a black primer. Any black primer will do. Um, what I end up doing actually is I try to do my base coat, my main color. So whatever the main color of the army is gonna be is what I usually use um, for uh, my base coat of, of painting. So essentially um, with the DAC army, you know, they, they've kind of had that tropical uniform that had a little bit more of a lighter green, which we'll get to later. Um, but it also got bleached throughout the years and whatnot. So I ended up starting with uh, this desert yellow from Game Air, the Vallejo Game Air. Um, it's a bit more yellowish initially. So I start with that and then I will uh, Zenithal highlight it with a 50-50 mix of the desert yellow and the uh, the white. So however you want to work that, that's how I do it. And then, uh, so that lighter color, the lighter highlight, I'll just hit it at the top. Um, you might be able to see just on the, the LMG over here, he's a little bit lighter on the top here. And then you can see over here, it's a little darker. And that's with the zenithal highlighting. So that's my next stage. Once that is done, what I like to do is I like to give it a acrylic satin varnish, again by Vallejo. Um, it just helps seals and protects that base coat, um, your base colors. So when you do go back to it and you start adding other colors or you try to do a wash or something, if you, um, you know, make a mistake or you need to fix something it's actually easily you can take it off easily either by going back with your uh, a bit of a brush with some water on it take and remove some of the paint or you know you might have to use a thinner but essentially i do that and um one key thing is is let the the, the varnish fully dry so uh so there you have it. that's the base color of the army Next up, I will be doing some of the lighter greens, and I'll show you that in the next, next session here. Okay, so our next step right now is to add a little bit of different color to uh, these guys' fatigues and whatnot. So uh, the DAC, they used to have this tropical uniform that had a bit of a green into it. And it got, uh, you know, uh, sun bleached pretty much in the desert and whatnot. So trying to find a lighter green that would still make a little bit of a difference in the uniform that you were able to tell. And it, it kind of did blend slightly uh, well with the um, previous color that I had, had picked. So uh, I did try a, a different color. I believe it was Middle Stone from Model Color, the Vallejos. Um, paint but I found that it was too close to the color that I used for the helmets and whatnot like the desert yellow so I decided to go with the Strachan green it's a very nice green um, that's kind of pale military kind of colors and then looking through some of my books for reference which uh, I'll put some pictures up here for you as well um, it kind of does quite well for for the color I'm looking for uh, later down the road you'll see that I will do a highlight or even just a, a slight uh, uh, dry brush and it'll make the difference. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you um, exactly what I'm doing uh, with the color and whatnot. So literally it's you get your, let me get him into focus here. You get your trooper and just put a little bit of that color, that Strachan green onto your palette and essentially whatever you decide if it could be the pants could be the the tunic uh, whatever you decide but literally just put it on 
and add that color. So very simple. And just wherever his tunic is, you know, you can add that color. As you can already see, it's it's making um, a slight difference in just the colors from tunic to helmet. You might have to do two layers on this. Don't worry, I wouldn't worry about the um, the belts and whatnot yet. Let me just zoom out a little bit here. You can go over these belts if you want, because you're just going to come back with a different color anyways. So, yeah, just add that to whatever you want to in your army. Um, there's a lot of, you know, different uniforms, different parts. That's all you do. And then once you're done doing that, you'll have... A bit of difference in your army so um, so there you go there's that Strachan green and essentially you get you know you'll get different different guys looking different ways but it all comes together so uh, that's that's the color I picked and I think it works quite well so on to the next part Okay, so next up, uh, we're going to be painting the helmets and the little case at the back here. Um, I believe that was the gas mask. Um, but they are going to be painted in this desert yellow. Uh, even though we used desert yellow earlier for the main color of the base coat, we're going back to darken it up a little bit just on these parts. Um, so you'll notice that a lot of times in the books and pictures that you see that are colorized uh, you'll see the helmets are slightly different color um, and then you can uh, throw some chipping onto it uh, which i'll do a little bit later just to show that the the helmets were still that uh, grayish steel underneath when they were sent to africa and then they would have to repaint them kind of thing so uh, essentially you just take your your color and just apply it to um, pretty much your miniature. You can see I already did it on the, the case at the back, but we're going to do it on the helmet here. So very simple. Eventually what happened is once all your colors are on, um, I'll end up doing a dry brush and it'll just hit some of the edges. Essentially, that's about it. So that and the case itself. And you'll end up kind of getting that effect there on your troopers. And that's pretty much it for that. Uh, you'll start end up ending up um, applying some of the other colors for the pouches, these bags. Um, you know, all the lanyards and stuff, the, the webbing, the boots. So we'll be progressing with that here. Um, so in the next couple of little um, sets here, we'll have multiple colors being used. And I'll pretty much do the same thing here. So there you have it. Okay, so in this session, we're going to be tackling um, a lot of the pouches, belts, um, some of the extra equipment that's on them as well. Uh, so multiple colors here. Um, just revert back to the, the beginning there. I'll also show you the colors uh, that I'm using currently as we paint through this. So uh, I'm going to just grab one of my guys and put them on my stand here. So... So essentially, just looking, there's a lot of different colors that they use. You don't have to do all this in the different colors. I tend to do it. Um, it's just me. I prefer it. I kind of, a little bit of a stickler to, to what I'm referencing. Uh, but essentially, uh, right now, we're going to use, 
Let's see here. Foot time focus. Uh, the Iraqi sand. And that's going to be for his webbing. So we'll start off with that. And as you can see, try to get that in focus for you. There you go. So yeah, we'll start with that. And it's literally just the webbing on the back to the front. So essentially, it's just this kind of stuff here. Take your time with it. If you make a mistake, it's okay because you can go back and take it off. Considering you had just uh, coated it with a varnish. And then eventually what happens is uh, in a later time when we do our uh, wash, this will all kind of pop and you'll see the details a bit more. Uh, he's got some in the front as well. They're a little bit harder to hit. So you just do the best you can where you can. That's really all I do. So right there next up we'll go with our uh beige world war ii so again this will be for more of the pouches and whatnot <clears throat> so kind of his uh, pouches that he has all over the place, really. I'll get some paint here on my... So that little pouch that he has back here, hit that up. They came in different colors, just from the material during the war being depleted and whatnot. Add that. Uh, you can use it just where his top of his boots are as well just very min minor spots that you can use it in you may have to put two coats you can also use khaki for that as well uh, which I will show you on a different miniature It's a little bit of a darker color compared to that. So I'll just take this guy here as an example. So same thing right here. There's a little bit of a green color to it. can't really tell too too much but it does definitely uh, look a little different in person okay so uh, next you have uh, I believe it's tanned earth so that color uh, I use this one for is canteen so get that in focus for you it just darken darkens up his canteen a bit kind of a more of a beige color to it Lots of little different colors that you can put on these miniatures, right? So, um, all depending on what you want. That's uh, pretty simple. Just fixing up a little mistake there. 
pretty simple colors. This is a very just tabletop uh, paint style for, for anybody who's interested in how I do my, uh, my Germans. So next up we have, okay, so we have Saddle Brown, I believe. It has a little bit more of a red um, tinge to it. There you go. So we'll use that for essentially his boots as they had kind of like these, uh, the early war, early Germans that went, they had like the uh, higher boots, knee high boots, I would say, but then they switched over to these smaller, shorter type boots that still had this reddish brown to them. And even though this looks a bit light, you're going to see with the wash, it'll darken up a bit more. So, and you can always go back if you don't like that color. You can always go back and darken it up if you want with a different one. This is the one that I used that I found that I liked. So, there's your boots. Just get the front there. Some little hard to reach spots sometimes. Okay. And then any other leather sections that you might want to paint, you can do the same. Uh, I tend to do just the top of the shovel here, the trenching tool tends to have leather protection there. Um, and sometimes even underneath you have your pouches, I believe. They're like a darker brown almost. So I'm going to use the same brown. I might go back using a different brown. So again, like I said, it's going to darken up as we go through it. Essentially, you just tackle that. Their belt was probably probably a brown as well. So I'll just hit that up. There you go. So you're starting to get some color now on this gent here. Oh, see, I missed the spot right there. Look at that. Let's go back to his pouch. I'll hit that, hit that again. Sometimes you just you miss things, little mistakes happen. But essentially once you get to the end, oh I gotta fix that. But um, you'll see how it turns out. Okay, so uh, next you also have like your rifle and whatnot. So I tend to use a chocolate brown uh, for the rifle. You can do this in whatever colors you want, whatever you prefer, whatever you think might, you know, uh, be a closer color match to what you see in books or what you're referencing. Whatever color you do, it's all good because there's just different materials being used for, for everything in the war. Um, just everything being depleted and whatnot. So this is a chocolate brown. It's a little darker. We're going to go back over top of it with the probably a silver for some of the parts that are silver. So don't worry about that. You know, I'm going off screen here a little bit, I think. Um, so we'll just put some of these finer details in. As you're painting, don't forget that like you can always go at different angles to get into different sections of your miniature. Um, I did hear a story once that guy was teaching uh, a couple of younger students of theirs on how to paint miniatures and stuff and didn't realize that the younger students didn't really grasp the fact that you can tip you know tip your miniature to get into different angles so it was a realization for him as well 
which was was good you know and then he uh, actually brought the attention to the attention of the students the younger students right um nice thing is you know you got your brown out right now we're going to hit this the wooden shaft here of the trenching tool as well hit that up with the brown essentially i think that is good for the browns just make sure we have that painted okay so you're coming together with it right as you can see there's more colors happening um, we're going to take a slightly different brown uh, i usually use like a flat earth So again, flat earth, I'll use that for like the belt of the rifle. You don't have to, it's just me. <laughs> so. Okay, so just changes up the color a little bit. It is a bit lighter, so you can see the difference. Okay. So, essentially, there you go. Uh, next up, we're going to do the flesh on this dude so i actually use a i just i i started using this um i'm not a fan of the army painter paints myself but i was following a tutorial and i decided to to give it a try so we'll try it again there are um other paints that are similar to it gw makes some decent flesh paints um there's also vallejo has a good range and uh there's a couple other um, high-end paints out there that are really good for flesh tones and whatnot essentially i'm just applying it just to where i need it for the flesh tones Very simple. Very simple. Get the hands. And like, don't be afraid, you know, if you, you do hit another part of the model. You can always go back again like i said this is a very tabletop quality paint job uh, by no means am i an expert at things um, i just like to show people pretty much how i do it and if it helps somebody you know by a little bit then perfect right so let me know if you like these videos um, i am going to be planning on doing this throughout the year um, I know myself and Bill, we have uh, decided to focus on some of the hobby aspect more on the YouTube than on our podcasts. So uh, you'll see more of this happening. But as you can see, it's coming together, right? So um, it looks cool. So go from there. Now we'll start adding. What color are we going to add here? Um start adding the oily steel that will go on to like the rifle and whatnot so make sure you if you do get these bottles vallejo oily steel um any kind of metallics uh, shake them up good you know if you're like me old school shake them up if you got one of those vortex shaker things perfect definitely gotta invest in one of those um 
but uh, otherwise, yeah, just make sure that you're putting this color out and make sure, sure that it's mixed well. Otherwise, the uh, pigment and whatnot kind of like almost separates a little bit and you won't really get your right color and that's when you have a chance of, of messing up on your painting. So little basics like that people may not know if they're just getting into painting and if they are into painting then more than likely they probably know um and of course dilute it a little bit doesn't have to be completely saturated but essentially just have enough on your brush because this is going to be very very minuscule for what you're doing so like on the tip of the rifle here okay uh, you have little parts here. It's really all it is. You're just hitting that to give the rifle the actual rifle look. Some of the details are a little small, but as long as you get the look of it and you're happy with it, then you have, you know, miniature you're happy with, right? So. Okay, a little belt buckle probably, and then back here probably some of the bayonet which you'll end up going over with black anyways. Um, and then of course this cap is usually a steel cap, aluminum cap, whatever it is. Cover that. You want to put little chip marks you can. you can do it in black don't put too much right even the boots show them that they're a little worn underneath just on the uh, studs probably won't show up too much but it's a nice little effect and then the actual shovel here okay so you're kind of at that state of you know um, you got all your colors on it looks really good I'll probably lighten up the flesh tone just a little bit um, and then we'll uh, do some dry brushing and stuff and show you where that's at. So essentially you're, you know, you're, you're pretty close, you know, doing pretty good. It looks good. Got different colors on starting to all come together. So we will show you on the next one, uh, a little bit of the blending, uh, on the flesh to brighten it up. And then, uh, same thing with the green part of the cat, the, uh, um, his pants and whatnot and uh, we'll go from there okay we're back and we are now going to do a little bit of uh, layering uh, very simple uh, I'm not going to go too too hard with this like I said tabletop if you want this is by far good enough for your tabletop needs if you like this already uh, otherwise you can go next a little step and like I said layering so uh, the flesh is a little like um, too warm for me so I'm gonna take the same flesh color and slightly mix it with just a lighter uh, beige kind of color just try to mix it on my palette to bring it up a little bit so you can do this however you want you just gotta take two colors and start mixing them together slightly okay so let's see if I can get in there with it so essentially okay so yeah you're just going to don't cover the whole surface just 
a majority of it just to brighten it up, kind of hit those edges. You'll see when you do a wash, or at least the way I do my wash, it'll all come together anyways. Okay, so you're just, all you're doing is brightening it up a little bit, keeping the color from underneath in the recesses to show the, a bit of a depth. Essentially, that's all you're doing. It's just putting a layer. Hard edges. It's really about it, right? So you just brighten, see how you just brighten it up? So compared to, let's see how it is compared to, there you go. See how darker this one is? And essentially when you do the uh, wash, it'll, it'll blend it all together even more. So there is that. There is also a little blending you can do on uh, the fatigues. So let me just grab some more of that color of my Strachan Green. And I'm just going to lightly mix it with the... Um, beige World War II colors I had used previously just to lighten it up just a little bit and again you can it doesn't have to be the full paint on it like the full effect just on some of the harder edges where the folds are top of the knee kind of thing like here right you can do this kind of effect kind of where the light is going to hit just like so right come back here add a little bit here essentially that's about it and it's just adding that color to blend as close as you can with the original color. And essentially that's that part there. Okay. So if you're content with that, if you feel comfortable with that, give her. Uh, you can do it with any other color if you want, if you prefer, if you like. Um, so, yeah, it's always practice. You can always practice doing that kind of stuff. Uh, it doesn't hurt. You know, I can do that with the brown if I wanted to as well. I can make the brown a little bit lighter. Just want to brighten up your brown with another color just to get a lighter shade of it. It's a little bit of mixing. So if I wanted to, I could do this just on the edges if I wanted to. Gives it another aspect to it. I can do the same thing here. Same thing here if I wanted to. Literally just kind of going over the edges to give it a little bit of a boost. Essentially. So... As you can see, he's coming together, right? Okay. So, what do we got next here? Uh, we will add a little bit of um, black onto the helmet to show that it's been dinged and the color from underneath is actually showing. So, uh, what I do is actually, I use German gray. Um, let's see here. Yeah. So I'll use that, shake it up good. It's actually pretty dark. I think this is the uh, same color I actually use for my helmets for my winter Germans. So just 
put a little bit on our palette. I definitely do recommend using a wet palette for any time you're doing these projects. If you're not sure what a wet pa palette is, you can check it online and uh, most stores will have it. If not, I'm sure they can bring it in for you. They're really, really handy. So, and literally you are just putting a little, couple little dings. That's all you're doing. Even wipe a little bit away if you need to. Less is more. Okay. There you go. There you go. A couple little dings. His helmet. You can do it on his case at the back as well. To show that it's been used and abused. Very light. Okay, so cool. So you now are ready for, I believe, a little bit of a dry brush for the uniform. So I am going to, where is it? I'm gonna use the beige World War II again. Uh, I'm gonna get brush that I can use. No, that's not the color that I want to use. Dark sand, I believe, is the color I want to use. So, again, so I'm just going to use it on the fatigues and the green as well, just as a little bit of a dry brush. So, has like a really light sandish beige kind of color to it but I'm gonna dry it off on my brush as much as I can just so I'm literally just gonna dry brush a little bit take some practice some guys have used makeup brushes which is uh, actually a pretty good idea and I just tend to go over the whole model very very light you don't want to have too much paint on your brush they do make uh, dry brushes for this I'm just using a standard brush of mine as my dry brushes are not doing too well these days. I haven't replaced them yet. <laughs> and that's really all it is. It's not much. Not much of a huge difference but it is there. Okay. So there you have it. He's almost there. Okay. Next up. So I'm going to actually go and put my satin varnish on this uh, German here. And once that's dry, I'm actually going to give it a AK streaking grime wash. I know you guys, if you're listening to the podcast, I talk about this all the time. It's kind of my cheat. Uh, it's, it works well for what I like. Um, I'm not again, professional. There's obviously different ways of painting. I prefer to use this stuff as it gets my miniature to where I want it fairly quickly on the tabletop. And I really love the way it looks. I use it for all my armies. So we will be right back with that. Okay, so now we're going to the wash phase or streaking grime phase, as I like to call it. So essentially, this is what I'm using, aka interactive streaking grime. Uh, you're going to probably scream when you see how I do this. 
but you literally slop it on. So get yourself a raggedy old brush that you don't care about anymore. And <clears throat> you are literally just going to slop it on. I do recommend using some gloves for this. If you don't have one of these stands, that's all you do. Slop it on. You're actually going to be taking it off after this stage here. So you're going to put it on, cover the whole model. Okay. Essentially, you're going to probably put these down for, you know, 10, maybe 15 minutes. You'll start to see uh, the AK actually dry. Uh, once you get to that state, then you can start taking it off, and I will show you how to do that. Okay, so we're at one of the final stages besides basing. As you can see, you're probably like, oh my God, what happened? Well, that's the streaking grime. So you're going to take some of the AK Interactive White Spirits and you're going to start to remove the AK. Again, I suggest wearing a glove. And you are literally just going to remove the Q-tip. Just dump it into your AK Interactive White Spirits product and just start removing you're actually going to move you're going to start to move the AK away from where you put it I'll be able to get this thing in the focus so you'll see all your colors come back okay but it's going to keep it in some of these recesses where you had it before and just gives it a little bit of distinction. Okay. Once you get like this time to switch over, you'll start getting a lot of the fuzzies left on your miniature, which you'll have to pick up afterwards. It's the only one of the only downfalls about it. Um, but otherwise it turns out good. See your boots are now a little bit darker. So, there you have it. You just remove or move it to where you want it. Okay. Doesn't take too, too long. Can be a little time consuming on bigger projects, but for me, it's worth it in the end. Um, other people might like using contrast paints for this kind of effect. Um, I don't know. I, I definitely kind of sticking by the interactive myself. So I like the effect. It's fun to work with. Well, sort of. <laughs> um, but otherwise, yeah, you just take it off wherever you want. You can lighten up some areas. Let's see how it's kind of. staying in certain spots I don't know if you can camera's not working with me today okay well we'll go back here so essentially I get in the face there a little bit more you'll see a picture of him later on essentially that's it he let him dry and he's done so if you go back you know and you see that uh, maybe there was a spot that has a little too much AK on him. You can always go back and remove it. 
So essentially, in my eyes, he's actually finished. We'll let him dry, but he's actually going to turn out very much like this guy here. So it's a very nice effect. Yeah, there you have it. All that's left is uh, for basing. All I would do is just do a dry brush on the sand that's already there, or you can leave it as is, uh, touch up the, the rim on the base, and that's about it. There you have it. I will have pictures for you. You can see them in the beginning of the video as well. Uh, I also have some reference books and stuff for, for you to look at if you're ever interested. Um, yeah, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video um, and we'll be able to put more out, uh, different armies, different games, uh, different paint schemes, stuff like that. Me and Bill have very different paint styles with similar um, you know, portions to it, but uh, I'm a very much tabletop standard kind of painter um, and I know Bill has tried to up his level a bit more, so... Uh, keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. We'll have a lot more coming this year. This is just one of the first. Please uh, let me know what you thought. Uh, maybe the colors, the video, all that kind of stuff. I'm always trying to make improvements. Um, I do know the camera was a little off today on this one. I'll have to figure that out a little bit more. But essentially, I hope you got the gist of the idea and the colors. And yeah, leave a comment. Hit us up. Uh, maybe there's an army you want to see, or maybe there's miniatures that you, you've seen on our posts that you would like to see how we did. Um, other than that, uh, you know, build it, paint it, play it, and we'll see you on the tabletop.